Hello everybody, what is up? Welcome back to another career mode episode. This is going to be the series roundup for this career mode anyway. I'm sure there might be a time in the future where we will come back for a season potentially on a live stream or something towards the back end of this year's FIFA. But you guys have spoken and you asked for a new career mode, so we're going to be doing that. I have released some polls on the community section, so if you want to check them out from watching this video... You can do that, leave your vote, and I plan on putting up a career mode team vote in the near future so we can start it probably, hopefully, this weekend, if that's going to be the case. But um, today we're going to look through, obviously, the best moments, the record, everything like that, and then we will actually have a look at the goal of the series as well, which is going to be a different, uh, it's going to be difficult, actually, to do that, because off the top of my head, I don't remember too many memorable goals that we scored in this series, but I'll try my best to find the best ones and throw them in here in today's episode if I can. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to go, but uh, we will see if I can do that. So, we should begin then with how it started way back when we were at Brighton. If we go to the My Career section, it'll tell us everything we need to know. So that's an overall statistic, but we're going to look year by year before we go into the overall thing. So, immediately you can see uh, we didn't spend a lot of money, but we came into FIFA 19... The first year there was an ultimate uh, setting on career mode. There was never an ultimate setting before. At least not in terms of last year's game anyway. Um, so much so that I don't think we used it straight away. We ended up getting ourselves into the swing of things with Brighton. We finished in second place in the Premier League. Can't remember how many points we were off of top spot. But it was quite ridiculous to see that. In terms of the Carabao Cup and the Premier League though. I mean, sorry, in the FA Cup. We finished in round three and round two. So the Cups... We're not something I focused on. I, I don't tend to do it because the advantages for winning it, it's great to have the little bit of silverware. It's great to have a little bit more money. But the disadvantages, you know, if you're fighting for titles, if you're playing Champions League football where it's just so much more beneficial, you end up with injuries that you just, you know, can't really contend with. And at this stage of the career mode when your team isn't really sensational to the point where you have a great second team, it is always risky playing in them. So it's something I don't prioritise right at the beginning of any series, really. Unless I know for sure I can't compete in the Premier League or the Champions League, then I, I, I guess it's nice to have the silverware. So, uh, so yeah, our record transfer fee, as it goes up year upon year, was Retsos. £11.5 million we paid for the central defender. And he was a bit of a um, disappointment, we'll call it. So much so that when we left Brighton, he went on a free contract. And I think he went to, is it Leverkusen in the end? Somebody like that. So yeah, he never really shined in our Brighton side. But I think that was down to the fact that I was getting used to defending. And at that stage, six foot, you know, one, six foot two defenders didn't really work for me. So uh, he's not the tallest of defenders, I don't think. And that is probably why. March went out of the club for 4.4 million. Again, that will improve year upon year as we get further into this list. League position in second, as I said, with a 46-game season. A record of 25 wins, 11 draws, and 10 defeats. So only 25 of our 46 games were, were victories, even though we finished second. That's quite ridiculous, really, when you consider 38 of those games were in the Premier League, you know? So, yeah, you can see why we finished second. It was a quite low-scoring season, I think, in terms of points that year, but we'll take it as it comes. On to season two then, where we got our first taste of Champions League football. And immediately comparing the objectives, we were finished mid-table in season one. That went to finishing Europa League spot in season two, which was quite ridiculous, wasn't it? Um, we got ourselves into the swing of things. Domestic Cup run a 16 straight stage and the Continental Cup, they wanted a quarter-final. Quarter-final um, position finish. Now, we smashed it this season. Champions League finishing in the semi-finals. Who beat us? I might have a look at that uh, when I go off to uh, to check out the goals and such. We finished in the semi-finals of the Champions League, getting knocked out. The FA Cup, we went to round five. The Carabao Cup, we went on to win. And the Premier League, we went on to win. So we did a double in our second season in charge of Brighton. Our record transfer fee, as I said, was smashed out of the park at that stage. 11.5 for Retzos last season before. It went to 43.5 million for Artur. So you can see we smashed it. We had a lot more money to spend. And we just generally... Did better than I expected in that one. Florian Andone went out of the club for 21.3 million as well. He went and uh, I was quite happy with that because he wasn't bad, but he wasn't like a, a 20 million pound striker, if I'll say that for sure. We finished first in the Premier League. Our overall record, you can see, massively improved. 64 games in this season, only losing six. Compare that to season one where we lost 10 of 46. We lost four less and we played another sort of 18 or more games. It was quite ridiculous. We scored 111 goals as well in those 64 games. 
scored 61 in 46 in season one. So massive improvement there. But from here, we knew we were about to embark on our period of dominance. So we continued into the next season where, again, we just went on, on a rampage, really. Winning the Champions League, winning the Community Shield, winning the Carabao Cup, winning the Premier League. So you could call it a quadruple, but I'll call it a treble. FA Cup Round 5 replay where we got knocked out again. But look at the record transfer fee for that. 125 million for Kevin De Bruyne. Wow. Arter left for 107 to go back to Barcelona, I think it was. And in this season, we just, we just kicked on and did it, really. We lost more games, even though we played a similar amount. You know, we played 64 here. We played four more games, but we also lost... Five more. So, yeah, it was a bit more of a difficult one, though, this season because, obviously, we went on to win the Champions League and everything. We had more games to contend with, a little bit harder. But you could argue that's actually a worse season. I think, so far, that season there, 2019-2020, was actually our best season in terms of this series so far. Um, although we won more in this year, our record overall wasn't as good. But we still smashed it. And this is the part where I decided, OK, we probably need to switch things up a little bit and maybe think about what we want to do moving on from this one because... Yeah, we're dominating pretty much. Brighton are now one of the best teams in the world at this stage. Should we move on? Well, we did. We went. We left. Came into 2021-2022 season where the objectives for Brighton were to win the league title, win the cup and win the Champions League. And we left them. We went over to Inter Milan. We joined them in this particular season, 2021-2022. Off the back of them not winning a league title, we went in there and the objectives, as you can see, were exactly the same as what Brighton expected. To win the league, to win the domestic cup and to win the Champions League with Inter Milan. We took over some players. We got Gordson. Um, who else did we take over with us? I can't actually remember. Tom, man. Gordson, Han, he went as well. Oh, obviously, the big man. What am I talking about? You know, Frank Brown. Can't forget about him, can I? Um, so, yeah, we, we went here and pretty much just tried to do it again in a different league. I wasn't even looking to smash a transfer record, but Thomas Partey went to PSG for 90 million, which meant we had a lot of money. We went in for Bayern's Paul Pogba. They miraculously accepted a 78.7 million pound deal. We took him over and he ended up being really good for us. We finished first in the Serie A. We finished, I believe, in the Europa League as winners because that was the competition we were in at the time. And um, we had a great time in that one as well. We finished in round of 16 of the Coppa Nationale too. So we didn't achieve every objective. But take a look at our record. Only lost two games in a 55-game season. Nearly went unbeaten, ladies and gentlemen. And that continued because I wanted to try and get an unbeaten season for you. But this season right here overtook the Brighton one. Yes, we didn't win as much. But in terms of record, it was our best record to date as well. So I was proud of my team for that. We go into the next season after where we were sat here thinking to myself, OK, we've got in the Champions League. Let's go on and win it. Let's push on and get ourselves a win in the Champions League. So into the next season, and this was the final year with Inter. We won the Super Cup. We won the Champions League. We won the Super Copper. Unfortunately, didn't win the Copa Nationale. We won the Serie A. Manager of Awards. And you're noticing as well, there's a trend here. If we go all the way back, Manager of the Year, no. Manager of the Year in that year, no. Manager of the Year for Brighton in our final year, No. <laughs> Manager of the year in uh, in our first season with Inter? No. Manager of the year in our second season with Inter? No. So yeah, it's kind of ridiculous to see the fact that we weren't able to win manager of the year up until this point. But Hernandez came in, Eggestein left the club, not a massive transfer fee. Not in terms of a record, our best season, but again, for silverware with Inter Milan, that was our best year with them. Which takes us up until now where we played our final season here with Schalke, where we came in to a team again who hadn't won their league, but had a good enough team to do it. Made so many signings. Alma Barrett came in. Dembele, our record transfer fee for 67 million. And Sai Gankov going for 93 to Everton. We won the Champions League. Won the Bundesliga. Got embarrassed, I'll call it, in the Dutch Pokal. It's what it is. But in terms of our record, we lost four games this season. Two of those coming in the Bundesliga when we wanted an unbeaten season. So our best record actually came with Inter Milan in 2022. No, 2021, 2022. That was our best record overall. Two losses. That is unbelievable. But overall then, it leaves us with a stage of three clubs, five league titles, two domestic cups. Of course, I think those being the Carabao Cup as well, both of them. Four champion, no, three Champions League wins and a Europa League win. Our biggest win coming against City, 6-0 in the Champions League final in 2023. That was our biggest win of the series. Our biggest defeat coming to Spurs, three goals to one, way back at the beginning of the series. Record transfer fee of 20, 125 million. And our overall record then, 
344 games as manager, 245 wins, 60 draws, 39 defeats, 675 goals scored, 228 conceded. That record right there is just something else. Holy. That is mind-blowing. So that's how our season's panned out, and that's how our career's gone, I guess you could say. And over the course of the last 73 episodes, 74 now we're into today, um, it's been quite the learning curve. I obviously had to, to not necessarily relearn the game, but with Ultimate coming out, the gameplay being different, you know, the bugs and such that career mode had at the beginning that have now hopefully been fixed. It's It's been one of those series where... I've, I'm going to enjoy it looking back, but I know there's times in this series where I really wanted to tear my hair out. At least we got the success, you know? It's not been in terms of a career mode where I have absolutely smashed it. Um, I've had fast, more successful series on my channel before, but it's one that I've had to kind of get to grips with. And I'm sure this is going to help me when it comes to our next career mode and such, and obviously with the patches and such coming out to, to fix any bugs that were around. Hopefully that'll be done for when our new series starts, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys have as well, and hopefully I've been able to entertain you over the last 73 episodes of this career mode, and if you have, I would massively appreciate a like rating. Obviously, I, I can't thank you guys enough for everything that you do for me and the channel. You know, like, the support is sensational on something that maybe isn't what is everybody's cup of tea. I know a lot of people don't necessarily play FIFA for career mode, but there are a lot of people out there as well who do, and, you know, it is quite a mode that is important to me. So the fact that you guys are still here supporting it is is kind of ridiculous. So I thank you for that as well. But soppy stuff aside, guys, um, that is going to be the end for, I guess, the roundup. We're going to move into the goals, hopefully, if I can find the good enough ones that I want to showcase, our top goals, if you will. We'll then talk about the players who are vital for the series, including, of course, our, our main man, Frankie, in goal. There he is. Look at him. Frank Brown, 88 rated at this point. In fact, I guess we could do that. I guess we could take a look at some of the best players we had playing for us and kind of see where they are now. So I think I'll do that before I show you the goals. So let's start then. Frank Brown, 88 rated. Been with every single club that we have played for. He's uh, He's been a loyal servant, six foot seven goalkeeper, American international now as well. He does bits for us and does bits for his country. And hopefully if I was to continue, he would continue to do that. I think as well, we're going to take a look at a few other players for this Schalke side before I move on to other ones, including Han. Maybe not necessarily one of the best players we've used, but in terms of servant, came in handy, didn't he? Hey, Han, handy. <laughs> I'll show myself out, but still, 95 finishing, 93 long shots. Look at that shot by 98 as well. Incredible stats for a Korean who came through. And, you know, if you're looking at the Korean side now, it is going to be one that hopefully might get some, some things done with Han in the team. You know, these guys are all going to be international footballers at the end of the day. We, we've grown them very nicely up until that point. Noah Gordson, another one right through with us as well, who stayed here for just the longest time and been a good servant. I don't think he ever, another United States, by the way, another American, I don't think he ever, like, shone in any team we played. Like, he wasn't the star man, but he was still there and he was still, you know, making issues for our opponents and allowing us the opportunity to use him and, and actually make things happen with him. So I don't necessarily think he was the best player we've ever used, but he has to get a mention in the series, doesn't he? And that's two Americans now, if you look at it, who have come through and actually served us very, very well in terms of our side. I don't think there's really anybody else from Schalke that I can kind of look at. I suppose Elmer Barak, but he was only here for this final season. Another one who's come through and would have a bright future, the Egyptian. I feel like as well, you know, these players we've got, we've got a Korean, we've got two Americans and an Egyptian. At the minute, we're not seeing like any major, major nations, you know, the top nations that you would consider as the top nine if you go into like the section to look at the nationalities. And they're not actually from there, any of our players. So that's kind of cool to see. But let's go then to Brighton and uh, where this series started to have a quick look at who's still there and who is playing football for them. Now, I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of people that have left because of the fact that we signed a few of them. But they've still got Vinicius Jr. Signed him in, didn't we? Bit of a beast. And he's still there. 91 overall as well at this point. I mean... How they didn't go in to win another title when we left them is just... I don't understand it. I don't understand it. We've got Anthony Martial there as well. Oli Watkins signing at the beginning of the series. And I spoke about how important he could have been. Never really did it, but still, not too bad. KDB. Oh, he's still there. He's still bossing it in the Premier League. Is there anybody else? Takefusa Kubo is still there. Lamina. Ali Reyes is still there. And Dombele. But I think there isn't anybody else from our youth academy that is still a Brighton player that I wanted to mention because I think they've all gone by the looks of this. Yeah, they seem to have all 
dispersed and gone elsewhere. So Brighton actually don't have that many of the players that I uh, would look at and think about really bringing over. What about Inter? What about Inter? What do Inter have left of the team there? I mean, there's one guy that certainly needs a mention from Inter Milan, isn't there? And that is Latoro Martinez. Quite possibly the best goal scorer we've had in any of our FIFA 19 series so far. I say that like we've only had two. We've got the road to glory and then this one. 32 in 30, was it five games or something ridiculous in this area? That is just unbelievable. Unbelievable. Nicola Barella, another one of the ones that was sensational for us. We picked him up as a replacement. Was it to Aaron Ramsey, I think it was, who left? And this guy unfortunately got injured, so he didn't play that much. But he is so good. And I can't wait to see what potential he's going to have in the next FIFA. I'll definitely be checking him out again. Got Peter Robinson, six foot seven CDM, 85 overall. Sandro Tonali, Rafinha, a lot of memorable players from the Inter team. I mean, it just goes to show, like, honestly, when you play a series, you kind of have a, a semi-attachment to these players. Do you remember I in FIFA 17, Anwar El Ghazi was picked up for me in my Legion United career mode? So much so that I then picked him up in the Road to Glory. And I was actually looking at him this year. The only problem is he's not as good as he once was. However, on our new career mode, I might try and get him involved because... Anwar Al Ghazi was a big player for me in FIFA 17, so I want to see him return maybe in the new series. But guys, that's it for the players. I have now shortlisted my, I guess, top 10 goals that I could think of having looked back. I said there was not that memory memorable ones, but there are quite a few. There was one in episode 2 that literally, first two episodes, there was already a goal of season contender. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the rest of this episode, including the goals of the series. And then we'll talk about probably... I guess, uh, what's to come?
How about that then, guys, for a goal of the series list? I believe as well that's the first time that we've ever had Messi and Ronaldo feature on the same list, which is kind of crazy when you think about it. But have your say on your favorite goal by voting at the top right hand side in the little eye poll. I will put it up there if it gives me enough availability to put all 10 on there. If not, There'll be a straw poll in the description, but do check out the top right-hand side where the I button is to cast your vote on your favourite goal. I'm not sure if it allowed me to put 10 different, you know, options in there. So if not, straw poll description, cast your vote. We'll see who wins. Uh, I have my suspicions. There's a couple of goals in there again against us as well. It went pretty good. So I thought I'd have to throw them in there anyway. But that's probably one of my favourite bits to do about a series, like looking back at the best goals. And I think for the next career mode that we start, I might start introducing like a goal of the season. Vote, do you know what I mean? So after every season, we round up the best five and let you guys choose on that one. But to end off today's episode, I'm going to show you very quickly how we have done in terms of uh, helping Brighton in their quest to continue their dominance. Unfortunately, they finished eighth this season in the Premier League, were unable to continue that dominance. So they very much cemented themselves like a mid-table team after we left the Amex. So uh, if we'd have continued there, we would have dominated the Premier League for sure. City going on to win it. Liverpool, Chelsea, Man United. It all looks like a fairly standard top four. Leicester in fifth. Spurs in sixth. Full credit to Burnley who've climbed up to seventh. Arsenal down in tenth. That's surprising to see indeed. Wait. Uh, Man City, Liverpool, Chelsea, Man United... Spurs. Okay, yeah, I was thinking, where's... I'm missing one of the top six, but no, we're not. It is actually like that. For the championship, though, is there anybody notable down here who have uh, sadly got knocked out? Fulham and Bournemouth both going straight back up after getting relegated. Cardiff down in there now as well. So, yeah, some surprising inclusions in there. What about Inter Milan? Oops, did not mean to do that. What about Inter Milan? Let's have a quick look and see how they perform in the Serie A before we go. And uh, like I said, keep an eye out for that vote for the new career mode, which will be coming up pretty soon. Oh, it's so unlucky. 86 out of 87 points. A point in it to decide the title. And Napoli took it. Roma drawing 11 games in the process. They were unbeaten for a time as well. Oh, sorry, Inter drawing, it, um, drawing 11 games in the process. Oh, I can't believe they lost it by a point, man. That is harsh. But there we go, guys. That ends off this series. I want to thank you, as I said earlier, for your support. I said all the soppy stuff earlier, so I'm not going to repeat it again. Keep an eye out for the poll that will come out for our new career mode. And like I said, this won't be the end of this one because I'm sure we'll come back at some stage for like a season or something in a, in a stream along the line. Who knows what waits in the future? Even I don't know at this point. But that's going to end it off. And I will see you all again for another career mode episode very, very soon. Hopefully the start of our career mode as well this coming weekend, probably Saturday night. If the vote goes up in time and I give you guys enough time, it's Thursday when I'm recording this. So hopefully I do give you guys enough time and we get an actual team that we're coming up for. Um, if you are new around here though, like what you see, hit that subscribe button down below. You upload every single day at 4 p.m. UK time and try again as well at 6 p.m. UK time to get double uploads out for you guys daily. So if you are interested in that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell as well, up to notify whenever new videos go live. And I will see you all again tonight, hopefully with another video. Catch you all then, guys. Adios.